Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, August 30th. Oh my goodness, here we go. It's the beginning of the Labor Day weekend, which means so many of you probably have already checked out. I know, I get it. You're entitled and you should take that time. If you are kind of checked out on your money or even you're catching up on this podcast, don't worry, we're always here. If you've got a question that maybe came to you as you were doing something really relaxing, sometimes that happens. You know, like the creative process is amazing. When you clear your brain out, other things have a chance to break in. And sometimes that other stuff can include your finances. So if something's going on and you'd like us to help you out, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, complete the form and let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air live. Today, we are talking to Lynn, who's on the line from Wisconsin. Hello, Lynn. How are you? Hi, Jill and Mark. Amazing to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you. So tell us what is going on in your life and how we can help you out. Yeah. So um, my husband and I are looking at early retirement Mm. and um, we have been working with a a financial planner who's a fiduciary and he's wonderful. But I grew up with a lot of money insecurity. And even though I think we're really in a fairly good position, I'm a little concerned, especially between early retirement and let's say Social Security and Medicare kick in. Mm. My husband is a wonderful, grounded accountant. And he's like, you know, if our retirement guy says we're ready and I say we're ready, we're ready. Let's do it. And I'm sitting back here going, okay. But by the way, Lynn is like, your husband's a CPA. No, he's, he's a controller. Okay. So your husband is a controller. You have a financial person who you pay and you're like, I don't believe either of you. Let's talk to Jill and Mark instead. (laughs) Exactly. Okay. All right. I got it. Okay. So tell us about, um, first of all, how old are you guys? I just turned 60 in, in May. So, um, I am 60, newly 60. And my husband is, um, he'll be 61 in November. Okay. So 60 and 61 this year. So how much do you earn together? So together we're probably close to 180 ish. Okay. That's great. Do you guys make contributions to retirement accounts on that 180? Yes. He, um, contributes to a 401k. I have not since I have been a freelance marketing person moving on to this farming gig, I haven't in the last several years, but previously, twenty for 27 years as when I was a journalist, I did. Oh, my gosh. Um, when you could make money being a journalist, which is great to know. So tell us about the balances. Like, what have you amassed? Um, what's in his 401k? Yeah. Well, we, we have um, two 401ks. And total, they're mm-hmm. nine, 963000 And these are pre-tax? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's traditional 401k. Okay. What else you got? Then I have a SEP IRA, which I contributed to when I was doing all of my freelance work, and that has 45,000 K in it. Great. Uh, We have, I have a Roth, which has 8,000 K in it. Mm -hmm. We have a brokerage account with 130 K in it. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. And we have cash with 126,000 K and that's deep cash. I like to squirrel a lot of money away. So that's deep cash that I don't like to touch. And then see previous comment about being financially insecure. (laughs) See, see that referencing that. Um, Okay. So that's great. Uh, Oh, and real estate. We have three uh, properties, including our farm and our home and an Airbnb. Okay. Wait a second. Let's do this. So three properties. So let's first do your primary residence. How much is it worth? Well, I, I didn't break it down for you guys. It's a, a million total. Okay. For so you've got three properties, a uh, million dollars. And is there any outstanding mortgage on these properties? There are. And unfortunately, I did it as what we have in equity rather than the other. So uh, 557000 in equity on those properties. Okay, so five fifty seven in equity and whatever four fifty in in um, yes in balance mortgage balances. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. Um, are they reasonable re- interest rates or yes. are they? Yeah, okay, good. And do you want to keep these three different properties? Is that the game plan? 
No, the plan is we are going to sell our one full Airbnb because it's about two and a half hours away from our farm. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting to be kind of a nightmare to deal with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, then we have our primary home, which is in Madison, Wisconsin. And we are actually we have a small studio Airbnb in that property that we are then going to flip and uh, do the upstairs three bedroom as an Airbnb. And then we're moving to the farm. Okay. At the end of all of these shenanigans, I mean, of this, of this process. Yes. What will you end up with the farm and that's it? Well, the farm and the Madison property for at least 10 years, we think. Okay. And, and then we'll probably sell the Madison property. Isn't it hard to age at a farm? It can be, but we can just let things grow crazy. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just asking the uh, the dumb city slicker question. Just asking. <laughs> just asking. Well, um, in, our plan, in our retirement plan with our, our uh, financial planner, I mean, we do plan to sell the farm in our late 70s, early 80s, and, you know, possibly go into an apartment or a senior living situation or something. We uh, went through a really hard, you know, uh, transition with my husband's parents, you know, hanging on to their property too long and they could have used a lot of more support. And so we want to make a good choice if we can when okay. we get older. Okay, I got it. Uh, do you guys have kids? So uh, we have my son, my um, husband's two sons. They're my stepsons. I love them to death, mm -hmm. um, but they're fully launched. Yay. Is your plan to retire at the end of this year? Is that kind of where you are? Yeah. So okay. I'm basically working at the farm full time now. And my husband um, would like to put in his notice. We're taking a big trip in September and he'd like to give his notice and then um, be gone by December, like second or third. Very exciting. So yeah. on the other side of this, when you guys are whatever, you'll, so at that point, you'll be 60 and 61. Yes. So at that point, how much income will you generate from the farm? That's the tricky part. We're hoping it'll be about 4K. Could be more. Could like be you mean 4,000 a month? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. A year. Okay. So I'm, I don't even have to do that. Like, so farm income is basically negligible at Correct. this point. Okay. So the sources of income would be using your accounts that you've just outlined to us, right? And then Correct. also the Airbnb, when you sell that, is that yes. is, is until you sell it, will you make income? Will you make any money from that or not? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what do you expect um, to be um, in terms of your needs for your expenses? Yeah, this is another tiny point of contention with my husband and I. <laughs> I look at what we're spending now and then what I think we'll be spending, you know, quote unquote, retired, but with still an Airbnb and the farm. And I think we're going to be at about 10K a month, including the farm and the Airbnb. He thinks we'll be closer to maybe 8,000 a month. I don't know why, but I trust you. But OK, <laughs> I do. What is the game plan that you think works best? And he thinks like what has been laid out to you by the financial planner, your husband and you like, what is the game plan that you guys, I got the real estate stuff and which will, you know, eventually net some money to you, but I'm not counting on that immediately because that's a process, right? Yeah. So in the, in, in the beginning part, let's say, you know, for the next seven years, what is the strategy? Yeah. Well, I should say we are planning to sell that the primary uh, uh, Airbnb this fall. Oh, okay. How much will that net you? And that should net us about, about 180 K I think. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's great. Okay. And so we were thinking of, of squirreling away about 80 K of that for the four years that we'll need for private insurance or the ACA mm -hmm. until Medicare. And then a yep. hundred into a brokerage mm -hmm. account the there would be a hundred added to your brokerage account. So the one thirty yes. in the brokerage is just an extra hundred, right? Correct. Yep. Got it. Okay. So you do that, you've got the money, and then do you want to live on that brokerage account plus something else until like so what are we doing until yeah. you guys collect social security? So that's, that's my question. Where I, I'm really, you know, confused. And um like I've been listening to your show, which is phenomenal. Oh, thank and you. 
Yeah. And you're advising people to draw down on that traditional 401k Mm -hmm. before you go after sort of those more, I guess, liquidy type. Yeah. The the, the assets that have already been taxed, because again, imagine this, that from age 60 to 67, your income will be low, right? It will be some, I mean, obviously you'll make some farm income, you'll make some money. Um, well, you no longer will have the Airbnb money. So let's talk about this as if it were next year, right? So it's next year. Mm-hmm. Your income is basically bupkis, as we Correct. say here in New York. I don't know if they say that in Wisconsin. I think we'll have about 20 grand, maybe. Okay. So, yeah. so if you think about it, if we were to pull from your traditional or your SEP, because neither of them have been taxed yet, mm-hmm. if we were to pull a uh, hundred thousand dollars out of the, those accounts, you'd pay tax on it, okay? But you'll probably most of this will be in the hundred. You'll be in the twelve percent tax bracket, and you can pull that out a hundred grand, you know, and you'll pay tax, and it'll end up being eighty. And you'll have 80 plus the 20 grand. That's your hundred thousand dollars. And, you know, that makes it if it's eight thousand a month for, as your husband said, if you need an extra couple thousand, you can pull from your brokerage or your cash. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what I see in this is a little bit of a gap. So I want to make sure I understand if there's any, is there any other event? Because I could easily, you know, create a scenario where the traditional account is whittled down over the course of, you know, age 60 to 67, then you get your social security, but it doesn't leave you with tons of money. So I'm trying to figure out what their seat, what the, the fiduciary sees. Is there something, is there an asset I'm missing? I'm sorry. We want to take social security starting at 62. Why? Because we feel like Getting it now makes more sense than a bigger payout when we're older. Are you sickly? No, I mean, we're not. No, I would say, you know, my husband has a little high blood pressure. I'm a kidney donor. So I do have, you know, I'm in excellent health because I'm a donor, but there could be complications in the future that we would have to think about. Mm. I guess, I mean, I'm normally very much averse to 62 because it is a permanently lower amount. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so does being a kidney donor curtail your life expectancy in some way? Traditionally, no. I mean, you, you, they're really not, you're really not allowed to donate a kidney unless you have excellent health and they, because they don't want to create another problem down the line, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't want to have to find me a kidney for having donated one. So the statistics are in my favor. It's just, you never know, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, so what's the social security for you guys at age 62? What's the total? Uh, Between the two of us, it's 4k a month. And what would it be at 67? Yeah, I want to say it's probably, and I I don't have those numbers right Mm. in front of me, but I want to say it's probably 63-ish. Mark, can you come on on the air and and help me with this? Well, I'm just, uh, I'm surprised that the financial advisor would suggest taking, for both of them, taking it at 62. I I am too. I'm I'm a little, I'm, I'm flummoxed by this. It could be because that's, that was our plan. Okay, but that's but like your he, plan. He should, but he should be telling you, no, nah, maybe not. I don't think, I have to say that, I mean, unless you want to bring your advisor on and like, maybe I'm missing something. I feel like I may be missing something, but like, it doesn't, I don't, I don't think you're being crazy. I don't think that this is a slam dunk. Okay. I really don't. You know, you've got a bunch of money that's saved already, but you're not spending like li- a tiny bit of money. Like if you're spending 10 grand a month, right? And you've got, uh, one, you basically got a million bucks that hasn't been taxed yet. Right. So Mm -hmm. that million is really, let's call it 800,000 because it hasn't been taxed yet. And so you have, uh, between that eight, nine million, you have like 1.1 or $1.2 million after the sale of some real estate. And if you retire right now, I feel like you're going to run through a lot of the money. Even if you took social security early, if you guys live till you're 90, I don't see that this works so great. 
I mean, I might be missing this because maybe I've missed one of the sales of the properties or that maybe that's what the advisor is seeing that like, hey, you'll eventually get this other, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars from the sale of the farm and the Madison property and all that. But that's not happening yet. So, yeah, that we plan to happen um, in we plan to sell the Madison property for about probably about it'll be about 400, we think, by then. Yeah. In 10 years. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's how it works. I'm going to just put it out there. I am against 62 for Social (laughs) Security claiming. I think it should be 67. And unless you tell me that there's a real health issue that guaranteed 8% a year, guaranteed, this is not a pipe dream. It's guaranteed that is worth a lot if you if we expect you guys to live till you're 80 years old, which I think you do. I mean, even if, though you're nervous about it, I think it's a lot smarter to think about the idea of even if you can make this work, it makes me a little nervous. I think that what the 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 plan is predicated on the sale of assets. And I will tell you, Lynn, it's not that it does not work. It is the comfort level that you have in this plan. So for me, a total freaking wimp, and I'm going to put it out there, I would not feel comfortable with this mostly because you know what? I don't know what it's going to be, what the real estate market's going to be in the future. Could be great. Could be crap. Could be, um, things could look better than I would expect, but I do know that 8% increase in social security benefits is a guarantee. And so that's the part of the plan that I like. If you can talk to your husband and your planner and say, hey, if we delayed Social Security until age 67, what would the game plan look like? And if we downgrade our our expectations of what our house would look like, our house sale would look like, like I want to, I guess what I'm asking for you to do is to run a scenario that is a little bit less of the best case, a little bit more of the worst case. Sure. And I think if you can get your arms around that and feel good about it, I'm sure I could too. But I'm just a little nervous about the amount that you have and also the spending level. Now, look, if you run these numbers, if you say to the planner, hey, run the numbers at 10 grand a month, have hubby work for two more years or one more year and and see if that, you know, what it looks like and let him, maybe he could, can he take a little like a, could he potentially take like a leave of absence or do something different? Or can you work a little bit and actually create some income in the intervening years? Like a controller to me seems like a kind of job like people want all the time. So could he yeah. do something as like a side hustle that makes me feel a little more confident about the game plan that I'd be interested in seeing? Yeah, I think we're both open to the idea of, you know, more profitable part-time work or possibly, you know, squeezing that Airbnb a little more to add more to the bottom line to make it work. Yeah, he's not going to stay at his job, but he's totally open and I'm totally open to part other additional part-time work that would help us meet that monthly expense. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, if that's if you're willing to do that, then I think we can get behind it a lot more. That's sure. really truly like that's how I feel. Any other questions for us? Yeah, I, I do think that the um, age sixty two Social Security versus age sixty seven is kind of a sticking point because his two siblings took it early and are super happy with the results of what they're doing. But of course their situations are completely I was different. just going to say, maybe they have $3 million set aside. I don't know what they have <laughs> or what they don't have. I only know the numbers in front of me, <clears throat> right. uh, but what I do know is, you know, pretty much every retirement person and most numbers people have a hard time giving up 8% as a guarantee every year. Yeah, that's the difference. And you know what? Maybe real estate will grow by 8% every year. Maybe it won't. But I love the consistency of income. That's what I love. And so that's one of the big game changers when it comes to retirement is that consistency of income. And I think that someone who is a self-described, someone who is self-described as having a little financial anxiety 
consistency of income can go a long way to actually overcome that. Yeah. So that's how, that's how I see it. And look, if you want to give us a holler back after they rerun some of the numbers, happy to talk. And if you want, if your husband wants to come on the air with us so he can like walk me through numbers, maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> we would absolutely love to have him. Okay. I bet he would love to do that because I'm sure he's going to listen to whenever this gets broadcast and he's going to be like, Oh boy, you, you missed painted. this. You yeah, missed you it. Let us know if there's anything else we can do. So thank you so much. And we wish you the best. And we'll, I'm looking forward to talking to your husband soon. All right. I'll keep you posted. Excellent. If you have a financial matter that is going on, something big, even a real life issue, just get in touch with us. You don't have to do this alone. Go to JillOnMoney.com, click the Contact Us button. We'll get your note. It is Friday, and I'd like to remind you that we've got some fun things here. Our music is composed by Joel Goodman. Mark Talercio is our executive producer and king of all things web. And we are distributed by Odyssey. By the way, you can subscribe to this podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you do listen to your favorite podcasts. And we like to remind you to lift someone up, change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <music>